Greetings, chess players. My name is Chris Torres, and this is my daily chess musing for February 1st, 2021. Hats off to the organizers of the 83rd Tata Steel Chess Tournament in Vacon Z. They did a great job just to hold the Tata Steel Masters during a pandemic, and chess enthusiasts around the world are very grateful for their achievement. Now let's talk about the controversial conclusion to the 2021 Tata Steel Chess Tournament. After 13 rounds of classical chess, the 2021 edition of the Tata Steel Masters came down to blitz tiebreaker games between Jordan Van Voor East and Anish Giri, who both scored an impressive 8.5 out of 13 to determine the tournament champion. The all-Dutch playoff was set to begin two tables away from Alariza Feroja and Radislaw Wojtasek, who were still playing their final round game. So the arbiters decided it would be best to, when Feroja and Wojtasek reached the time control, ask them to relocate to another table so that they wouldn't be distracted by the excitement of the Geary vs. Van Faris playoff. At the time of the request, Alariza Feroja was doing quite well in his game, and it seemed like he was destined to win, which would place him in a tie with Van Faris and Geary. However, his Sonneborn-Burger tiebreak score was not as high, so even if Feroja finished tie for first place, he, per the tournament rules, wouldn't be allowed to participate in the playoffs to determine the tournament champion. Feroja was understandably upset about the fairness of the playoff process and being asked to move out of the way so the players he would likely finish tied with could battle for the championship, so he declined the arbiter's request to change tables. Being angry and distracted by the neighboring playoff game likely were factors in Feroja sadly allowing his winning position to fall apart, and after his game finish, he shouted at the tournament organizers, which was an unfortunate way to finish an otherwise historic chess event in the pandemic era. The playoff match between Jordan Van Faris and Anish Giri was captivating to watch. Van Faris and Anish Giri drew the two blitz tiebreak games. The final Armageddon tiebreak had an intense time pressure scramble where blunders were played and pieces were being knocked over. When the dust settled, Jordan Van Faris won when Anish Giri's flag fell. In doing so, the 21-year-old became the first player from the Netherlands to win the Tata Steel Masters Super Tournament in Vekan Z since Jan Timmen took first place in 1985. So after 13 rounds in Vekan Z, the final standings are First place, Jordan Van Verist with 8.5 points. Second place, Anish Giri also with 8.5 points. Third place, Andrei Esipenko with 8 points. Fourth place, Fabiano Caruana also with 8 points. Fifth place, Alariza Feroja also with 8 points. Sixth place, Magnus Carlsen with 7.5 points. Seventh place, Pentala Hare Krishna with 6.5 points. Eighth place, Aryan Tari with 6 points. Ninth place, the early leader, Niels Grandelius with 6 points. 10th place, Jan Christoph Duda with 5.5 points. 11th place, David Anton Giaro with 5 points. 12th place, Radislaw Wojtasek with 5 points. 13th place, Maxime Vachir Legrave also with 5 points. And 14th place, Alexander Donchenko with 3.5 points. Now that we have recapped the event, let's take a look at my favorite move of the 83rd Tata Steel Chess Tournament. So my favorite move from the entire event occurred during round 10 in the game between Anish Giri and Radislav Wojtasek. Wojtasek plays move 48, bishop to b2. What does Anish Giri play? I will give you five minutes.
Geary plays the exciting rook takes h7, and black resigns because if king takes h7, then rook to d7 check, king g8, h7 check, king h8, and knight takes g6. Is an elegant mate. Alternatively, after 49, rook takes h7, Wajdasek could have tried playing 49, rook f7, but exchanging rooks on f7 leads to a slow and unexceptional loss. For example, rook takes f7, king takes f7, h7, rook b8, rook d7 check, king e6, rook a7, bishop e5, king to g4, rook to b4 check, king h3, rook to b1, knight takes g6, bishop c3, knight h4, rook a1, rook takes a1, bishop takes a1, g6, bishop g7 is keeping those pawns held back for now, king goes to g4, king f6, king h5, bishop h8, knight takes f3, bishop g7, knight g5, bishop h8, knight f7, bishop g7, and finally h8 equals queen, bishop takes h8, knight takes h8, king g7, king g5, king takes h8, king f6, king g8, g7, king h7, and then king f7, and black can do nothing to stop white from promoting to a queen. If you enjoyed today's Daily Chess Musing, be sure to check out the Daily Chess Musings Facebook page. Follow me on Twitter at Tori's Chess. Join our Daily Chess Musings Club on Chess.com and peruse through all of our free chess lessons at DailyChessMusings.com. And with that, I bid you adieu until tomorrow. But before you go, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons.